I want to tell you guys a story. A little over seven years ago, I was, by every measure, a broken man. My physical injuries had left me completely, if not totally, crippled. My first marriage had disintegrated. My emotional state was a disaster. And I found myself alone, asking God for help. God sent an answer. A little known conversation on the internet with someone I didn't even know from 2,000 miles away would eventually change my life forever. After several short conversations, online in a chat room we seemed to be friends no real sparks were flying but we got along and after about eight or ten conversations we lost touch about six weeks later I run across the same person and we start chatting again only this time it's different. There's something there. We missed each other. Our conversations, though short, were meaningful. And this time, we didn't lose touch. It wasn't long before we were chatting every night before bed. In fact, we couldn't go to bed without saying goodnight to each other. Every day started with a warm and warm text message. A good morning from an angel across the sea. Several months of this went by, and one day we said to each other, maybe we should meet in person. Normally, this is an easy thing to do. You go to a coffee shop, you have some coffee. It's a little more difficult because she was in another country 2,000 miles away and we had to figure out how to make it happen. Eventually we did. I booked a flight, got a passport, made all the arrangements. She took vacation. We're gonna spend three and a half weeks together. I was about to fly 2,000 miles to a woman I'd never met in person to spend three and a half weeks with. A lot of people thought I was crazy. Hell, not only did people think I was crazy, people thought she was crazy. They were very much afraid for her safety. Some of them were concerned I was some crazy psychopath that was gonna come down here and do God knows what. But that three and a half weeks taught me one very important thing. I left knowing I didn't want to spend any time with anyone else. The next few months were a dream. Every night we would meet on Skype. As soon as she came home from work, she would call me and we would chat on Skype for hours. We'd go to bed together, 2,000 miles apart. I could think of nothing else but how to get back how would we be together again? So we saved, scrimped, and saved, saved and scrimped. And as soon as I could, I was on the next flight. This time, it was two months. Two months. Never wanted to leave. Just about a year goes by, and circumstances are finally such that we can get married. And we didn't care. We didn't need a big wedding. We just needed each other. So we got married at the registrar's office, just the two of us, her sister, someone from her work as witnesses, and the pastor. Shortly after we got married, we found this piece of property, a little four acres in the middle of nowhere that we could build a life at. Not enough to really farm, but we didn't want to farm. 
We just wanted a homestead, a quiet place in the country that we'd have for ourselves, that we could raise our children, where we could enjoy the life God had given us. We spent the first year of our marriage in very small, humble apartments. Two years into our marriage, we had tried to have a baby without success. We even saw doctors. My wife had taken medication and we had still had no luck. Finally, my wife said to me one day, she said, if I meant to have a baby, I'm gonna have a baby. It's in God's hands. And she threw away her medication and said, I'm not gonna think about it or stress about it anymore. Two months later, she was pregnant. The next nine months were a dream. We spent every day reading about the development of the baby. We saw the doctor regularly and she was perfect. Not a single complication, not one day of morning sickness, nothing. And then she gave birth to our first child, our daughter. A beautiful, healthy, happy baby girl. Our dream was complete. Our family had been formed. My wife loved our daughter, cared for her better than anyone I've ever seen. But she always wanted a boy, always wanted a boy. And she was determined, even at her age, and she wasn't that old, but she was pushing 40, and people are worried because she was getting older, but she was determined. It took more than two years, and one day she took a pregnancy test, and it looked positive, but she didn't trust it. We've been down that road before. So she sent me up to the pharmacy where I got three more. And all three of those were positive too. The day our son was born might have been the happiest day of our lives. Somehow, I had gone from this broken, shattered shadow of a man to having a loving wife two beautiful children and a life only dreams can bring. 17 days later a blood clot took my wife the mother of my children the angel that saved me I guess she was needed elsewhere And that is our story. And what happens next is the next chapter. How we go on and how we live without that miracle, that angel that brought us together and made us what we were, what we are gave us these children. Now it's just a matter of what's next. Where do we go? And I don't know where we go. But that's what this is all about. Where do we go from here?